across the country and to also get, uh, you know, some responses from government officials and also members of the opposition. But we'll start off with uh, the headlines in the newspapers and the Times is what we begin with. And so that big story, Ghana receives 249,600 doses of AstraZeneca as gifts from UK government under the COVAX facility. So for all those who took the first jab of uh, AstraZeneca and have been waiting for months to take their second jab, uh, there's a window of opportunity for you to finally get your second jab. And so that's the update on this. Also, some vaccines are being given out. That's the Johnson and Johnson. So anyone who has taken AstraZeneca first jab, you're not allowed to go and take Johnson and Johnson. So please take notes. Johnson and Johnson is just one jab. And so it's for all those who have not yet taken the AstraZeneca. Your time will also come. I'm sure they'll announce all the details for us so you can also walk into any health facility and get your second jab. And also, we've not abandoned hospital projects by previous administration. That is the health minister, Mr. Juman Main, when he was responding to a statement that was put out by the NDC or the minority yesterday. They've been asking a number of questions concerning Agenda 111. I will read a bit of that statement as we move along. BOST fails to recover 446,845 Ghana cities debt from BDCs. That's according to the Auditor General's report. And 166 specialists uh, to operate on conjoined twins next month. The Business and Financial Times, it says that energy sector debt to remain above 1 billion US dollars yearly until 2024. SMEs participation in digital economy key for recovery. And also President Kufado inaugurates Professor Edu Boahin Square and Haptel donates laptop to RTI Commission. Daily Guide says agenda that 111 ruffles NDC, Mahama Christ Wolf. And uh, yesterday, the former president indicated that Agenda 111 is an afterthought. Also, the health minister responded to this. We'll get into all those details soon. And 249,600 doses of AstraZeneca land, $36 million meters fraud uncovered, and BOSS awarded $39 million contracts without approval, according to the Auditor General's report. Um, the business finder consolidates salaries allowances to make retirement more meaningful for workers, according to the NPRA. My commitment to fighting corruption is steadfast. That's according to the president. And Ghana and Singapore to create financial trust corridor to boost business support. Quite a number of papers this morning. Let me quickly run through them. The Vanguard says NPP has fixed economy in four years, according to the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Kissed students undergo counseling. And yesterday, the, one of the girls who was seen clearly uh, uncomfortable when that kiss was being given to her. She says she feels as if her virginity has been broken. Hmm. Uh, 249,600 doses of AstraZeneca arrived in Ghana and Vanguard online hits 200,000 and still counting. The Daily Statesman, the woes of journalists, psychologists say many suffer poor maintenance, uh, mental health due to emotional constipation and occupational reality shock. UTAG to re return to negotiation table, but that strike has not been called off yet. Ghana receives another 249,000 AstraZeneca COVID vaccine. Supreme says court rules for the Akwe family over Huakpo land and Nadmo DG committed to education development in a half four. And a quick one. So the Newsday says that Parliament alerts LGBTQ plus advocates pump in $238 million to slither anti-gay bill. Horror at Ghana Standard Authority. And finally, the Daily Graphic says commitment to corruption fight high, according to Akufuado. UTAC suspends strike. Parties agree on milestones and anti-robbery uh, anti-armed robbery squad robbers in shootout yesterday. Joining me in the studios this morning, I have Elikem Kotoko. He's a member of the NDC communications uh, team. And also, Saka Salia is a member of the NPP communications team. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Morning. How are you Good doing? Morning, At least Elikem, I know. I've not met you, like <laughs> I was saying earlier. This will be my first time yeah, uh, right. on paper review that I'm meeting you. Yeah. It's good to have you in the studios. And I hope much. everything is well. Brace How yourself you? for a lot of mischief from him. Oh, I should, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, but first story that we'll be taking a look at. And quickly, even before that, I want to say a quick happy birthday from Dr. Kenna Frimpon to Ruth Linda, who's the Principal Assistant, Department of Statistics and Actuarial Science. And also happy birthday to Kelvin Kenne 
of Adisadol College. This is from Mr. and Mrs. Johnny Hughes. Yesterday, we paid a visit to the Senior Correctional Center at Roman Ridge, where we interacted with some of the young boys, um, you know, who are very creative, have been able to make clothes, shoes, bags, and those are some of the reforms that they undergo when they are sentenced to the Senior Correctional Center uh, after being convicted of criminal or civil offenses. And yes, we got to speak to them and, you know, the PRO for the Ghana Prison Service Greater Accra Region also indicated that a lot more help was required. Now, the whole idea is to go hard on this. And so we know that Mimi uh, or Miriam will also bring us a full documentary on the fate of children who come into conflict with the law. And that'll be on um, Tuesday at 9.30. That's next week, Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. Yesterday, there was a demonstration by public sector workers. And they were demonstrating against that 4% increase in salaries as against the about 79% increase in salaries for Article 71 office holders. And they are saying that this is very minimal as compared to the new taxes that were introduced this year. And they're really suffering. They want to change. They're asking for 25% increase for this year and 35% increase for next year. Let's take a look at a bit of what happened on the streets yesterday. So please, we are moving now to Organizers of the protest attributed the low turnout to lack of financial capacity by members to transport themselves to the venue. The man has almost divided into two. Public sector worker, nobody will have even, I don't think somebody have 100 Ghana in their salary or in their bank account. So even taking cars to this place, this is a confirmation that Ghanaian workers are actually suffering. Kickstarting from the brass fort at Circle, through to Adabraka, then to Accra Central, Members of the group said they expect their leaders to immediately address their grievances or resign. Everything is expensive now and we are really in a serious crisis. We are dying slowly. We are dying in pain. There's nobody to come for us. Our leaders have disappointed us. So this negotiation is like a life. It is my whole life. We want to tell organized labor and their gentlemen partners who are government appointees that enough of this nonsense. We will not take it again. We are saying that to hell with the 4%. The demonstrators finally made their way to the Black Star Square and then to Parliament where their petition was received. Norbert Bobochi, who speaks for the aggrieved public sector workers, indicated that the group seeks an immediate increment in base pay or the resignation of the General Secretary of the Trades Union Congress, Dr. Anthony Yaba. We hereby respectfully ask that the Chief Labor Officer be directed by law to initiate a fresh negotiation, having in mind that we want 25% base pay increment and not that of 4%. And we are also asking that quite apart from that, the 7% they negotiated for next year should also go to 35%. Either than that, he can also resign. Director of Public Affairs at Accra Regional, DSP Juliana Obey, described the security deployment plan as prudent. Those are some public sector workers on demonstration yesterday. They are asking for their base pay uh, to be renegotiated to 25% for this year and 35% for the next year. Eli Kem, I'll start off with you since you're, uh, well, of course, I mean, opposition. I don't know what you have to say about this in particular, the fact that we're looking at a, a monument committee increasing yeah. Article 71 office holder salary by 79% and more in some cases, yet public sector workers are being given an increment of 4%. This should be worrying. Thank you, Bella. Good morning and uh, to our viewers. Especially today, I want to say good morning to my dad, mm. uh, Sam Frank Kotoko. Uh, with reference to what you just said, you see, I am glad that you brought in the fact that emoluments of Article 71 office holders, which further went a step ahead to want to even suggest that our first ladies ought to be paid some amounts. Actions of this nature are some of the reasons you will find these unions also very aggrieved because if the state would always continue to say we don't have money but have enough for themselves, but when it comes to these unions, then we feel that a palpable throw of crumbs at them is enough. 
then we will continue to be in this jeopardy that we are finding ourselves. I mean, this is not uh, peculiar to only the NPP government. I mean, governments have come and gone, and this has been the case. Mm. But of recent times, the way they begin to say, my brother may not like it, but the fact that there's heightened corruption, whether it's an impression or it's just uh, what have you, it is giving them a lot of reasons to ask, why then are we being treated this way? So there's need for stakeholders to see the importance or the relevance of calling them and getting to the negotiating table. Mm. They all need to have that mind, open mindset in order to understand that in moving into a negotiation table, you need to have an open mind and be able to secure a win-win situation. They are, in the meantime, saying 25, 35, mm -hmm. but it may not necessarily be what will be achieved. But as we are even in Ghana, everybody knows that when you go to the market to buy a bottle of water, they will tell you it's 30 cities, but in the end, you may negotiate it to maybe 20 or 15. Mm. So I think their concerns are justifiable by the economic hardships that has become very untold that has been visited on us, especially mm. of recent times, which unfortunately is always attributed to COVID-19. Meanwhile, the same COVID-19 is the result for which a lot of funds have been uh, given this government. Mm. And so I think the concerns raised by these unions is, 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 is right. Mm. We don't need to play politics with it. Okay. They need to be called in. And if you could borrow the words of President Kufo some time back that, look, employers are pretending to be uh, uh, paying mm. and the employees are also pretending to be working. But their leaders are saying that we had to secure the jobs of about one million of us, which is why we agreed to this, even though we were not uh, for it in the beginning. But they said this is the only way they will not lay off some of us as public sector workers. And so there were lots of issues that came up, which is why they had to accept this deal. We, we need to admit that for every economic to, economy to thrive, the base becomes the bane mm. or the bone that does more of the work. Isn't it surprising that all over the world, we have heard world we've had world leaders mm. uh, call for pay cuts in their own salaries, etc. It didn't mean that that alone was going to resolve the entire problem, but it is what is called leadership. Mm. If you make me avert our minds to President Mahama, when he noticed that there were schools under trees and the need to build chip compounds, mm -hmm. he saw the need to call on his appointees to have a pay cut at certain percentage. That goes into that. Out of it, I think about 1,500 schools were taken out of trees, mm. of, 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 from the trees, uh, under trees, and then so was the case with, uh, with the chip compounds that were built as well. But uh, with the current regime, it is difficult for the president to actually even make such a decision. And unfortunately, however, mm. saw the need to call for a pay cut or a budget cut for the judiciary and the legislature. Mm. So when you have leadership that is not showing the expected leadership, you have some of these albatross on your neck. That, that is not the only reason why the, the, the unions are calling for all mm. of that. Is it, if it, if is it really to just save their jobs? If it is really to save their jobs, then I think the president, again, government must also be able to show that, look, the number, you recall the 125 appointees that we were told were supposed to do a certain work and transform the economy in four years. Mm. What has been the situation? But you talk about, you know, President Mahama at that time yes. taking a pay cut because of yes. those schools under trees. But yes. the Professor Francisca Edubwanda Emoluments Committee, mm -hmm. you know, said that they were going to give them some pay eventually mm -hmm. after that. And so is it not the same thing? I mean... The president now had said that we were not going to see or they were going to experience a pay cut in mm. their salaries as well because of COVID-19. That is what I'm saying. That so it is, is it not the same thing is, that we're it is, seeing? It is what shows leadership when a leader understands and shows sensitivity to the plight of the governed. So it is expected, not necessarily, for the president to also go for a pay cut, but opt for any other option that would appeal to the people mm. to know that, look, he is with us. He understands the language we are speaking. But you he still take our, it in he, your ex gratia anyway. Ex gratia is, so what's the point in taking is, pay cuts if eventually you're still going to take the money? An ex gratia is different from your salaries that you would say that you are. You recall when president... But if you take a pay cut, mm -hmm. is it not going to be added to your ex gratia? So at the moment, that, that it is, looks as if you are helping people, no, but eventually you, you take the money. Your pressure is a calculation of, uh, for, for your period that you've worked, yeah. and that is more or less like a benefit. It is not to say that what you have said, that look, 1% of my salary for the next one year should go to this. That mm. would definitely be deducted. But if you take a pay cut for, let's say, two years, mm -hmm. and you're being paid ex-gratia, mm -hmm. they should be able to calculate it in such a way that 
you know, it knows that you didn't take, a, you know, your pay for so two years, so it should be deducted. Definitely. But the Monuments Committee paid for. De definitely, there are always... So uh, it doesn't really reflect no, the sure, health that sure, you're saying you're giving to Ghanaians. No, it sure reflects because, you see, these are done in conjunction even with the... Um, the, uh, the the department, how do we call it? the is it the, the accountant general's mm -hmm. department? So all that will definitely be affected in the end. It it was not affected. It surely will be. It, it surely will it be. It was effect. a full pay that they received. It surely is affected, and I'm telling you this in authority. It would have, hell would have broken loose if that has not been the case. I see. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Let me bring uh, Saka in because the finance minister had said that there was no money because of COVID-19, um, you know. And now where these people are saying that you said there was no money, yet the Monuments Committee found a way to increase salaries of Article 71 of its holders by 79%. And yet public sector workers are getting an increase of only 4%. There is the introduction of new taxes and we have to pay. If there's no money, then let it reflect in everybody's accounts and not just some people. Because it looks as if some people are privileged and the rest of us can... Excuse me to say, go to hell? Yeah, thank you very much, Bella. Good morning to our cherished viewers. Good morning to my brother, Elikem Kotoko. And especially to His Excellency, the President, Donald Duncan Kufadu, and then the Vice President. Well, I mean, you can, in a very simple manner, you know, take it the way you, you just explain it. Mm. That, oh, some people, by, 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 by this, the Article 71 office of this, have been increased. But first of all, let me make it clear that Article 71 of his all these salaries have not been increased, technically. They have not been. When you say technically, what do you technically, mean by that? Because what has been preferred by the the, the, the emolument committee mm -hmm. is the money that they were supposed to take four years ago. So so they are paid on account. And what the committee brought or the, 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 the suggestions that came from the committee mm. that mm. also went through parliament for parliament to now endorse it mm. was a, 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 an amount that was preferred to members of Article 71 office holders on account. This it is, is what not, they were supposed to have taken. This, th that is what they were supposed to have taken four years ago. So you're saying that there were no increments in the last four years? Is that what no, you're I'm trying to say? That, that is what they are supposed to say. From now go, you see, the 4% that we are talking about. It is taking place this year, mm -hmm. not 2020 or mm -hmm. whatever. And therefore, when people uh, see that, mm -hmm. oh, office 70, uh, Article 71 office holders have been increased by 79%, mm -hmm. and all other people, <laughs> you know, uh, are, are said to go to hell and all those, that is accurately uh, inaccurate. Well, but even before you move on, because I'm looking at the salary increment of you know, um, Article 71 office holders from yes. the Interior Committee. Yes. And I see a clear increase. I mean, when they came into power in 2016, the president was, uh, came to me 29,899. 2017, it increased to 35,520. Then 2018, 39,072. 2019, 42,979. And 2020, 47,277. And it's the same for vice president, cabinet ministers. They all experience an increase every year. That's what I'm saying. Technically, you see, the amount that was preferred by the, 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 the committee is the amount that they were supposed to be paying them in 2017 up to 2020. What amount were they supposed to be paying? Increases increase, anyway. <laughs> no, no, that, I mean, in a simplistic manner, you would just say increase is increase. But that is not the case. You should know that, I mean, they, they are paid on account. And that is the reason why when, when, when that increase comes, then they, they are paid their back lock. Because that is the money that they were, that is the increase that they are supposed to have had in the mm. past. But because of the way it is structured, they are unable to do so. But who have to, for instance, I mean, in, from 2020 up to 2024, mm. the increase will actually come after another committee has been set. So, so but let, let's not belabor that. The point is that, but the point is about the 4% uh -huh. that the people are agitating against and all that. We all know that. COVID had devastated the whole world. Okay. The global supply chain has been disrupted, not only in Ghana, everywhere. And therefore, revenues that countries are supposed to get, they don't. I mean, we have a budget shortfall and projects that we are supposed to prosecute because of the shortfall in budget and revenue, mm. we are unable to get money. Indeed, if you look at even the public sector, how many are there? I mean, less than 700,000. But if you look at their output over the year, because of COVID, the productivity hasn't been all that. 
to drum home about. And therefore, if government, if we go to other, other jurisdictions, they are laying off workers. Companies are laying off workers. If you go to the U.S., about 36, of, uh, 36 million of their citizens had COVID. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you go, it, it, it also affected the whole economy. If you go take their debt to GDP, even, even uh, a UK debt to GDP, 98.9%, almost 99%, almost everywhere, every country is reeling under the devastating effect of COVID-19. And therefore, some countries are just, some countries are even laying off workers. Mm -hmm. I also, I remember very well, I mean, private companies laid off even uh, 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 what, what do you call it? Private schools. So your point here is? So the point is that productivity reduced. We're unable to produce the way it should. The economy suffered. Uh -huh. Everybody is sacrificing. That is the reason why I first of all made you aware that it is erroneous for anybody to assume that posture, uh, a position that, oh, there has been 79% increase in, 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 I think, 71 office holders. That, has, that is not the case at all. Mm -hmm. No Article 71 office holder has, uh, salary has been increased. But could we not have held on to that, especially looking at how <laughs> we COVID held on to disrupted the everything? No, but, the, but, the, but, but the listen, COVID disrupted living. everything. No, there were teachers yeah. who lost their jobs, yes. private school teachers, yeah, but, but and they in, were agitated in, every single day. Yeah, exactly. There were some funds that were supposed to have been made available to them, which was a promise. They still did not receive no, it. The, and so is it fair that <laughs> as we're going through all this, we've borrowed so much money that we're yet to pay. Citizens are being asked to pay back indirectly, which is why some taxes have been reviewed no, no, no. and some is have she, been increased. She, so no, if it, these citizens are paying back all these, and yes, they get Nobody's paying back anything. See, citizens are not paying back see, for the see, free listen, water and the free listen, electricity. Listen, 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 listen. Our own information listen, minister said oh, it. I, that you would have to pay back eventually, which is no, what we're doing. Yeah, see, then it means that, you see, there has, nothing has ever been free. If, but because, you knew that if, and you I'm, told I'm us coming. it was no, free. No, no, no. If I want to take your own assertion, if you are saying that government will do you know, uh, uh, something free for the, the populace and try and get innovative means of recouping it. Mm -hmm. And then you say that because of that, it is not free. But the information then minister himself said it, that we see, would have to pay then back. Then nothing has ever been free. So why did you tell when, us it was when free? They, when, when people used to tell us that, oh, uh, Kwame Krumah brought free uh, education in the past and all that, and then they, 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 they hammered on it and all that. Do you think the money that Kwame Krumah used then was from his own packet. They had a way of ensuring that they recoup such money. From the citizens. Order. Yeah, anywhere. Even if it is a grant or even gift given to Ghana, it is given to Ghana uh, 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 as citizens. It's given to the citizens of this nation and uh -huh. therefore it's their property. Okay, so you, nothing you was free. That's so so what you technically, if you are saying because we are bringing other means to recoup it, then it means that it, 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 I'm it, not the one it. saying it. I yeah, said I mean, the information minister said it himself. So, so I disagree with that. Back. But you see, the four percent that we talk, where that they are saying that oh, it is not enough and all that. I thought that it, it is a sharp case because look, we have gone through the negotiation table with the, uh, 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 the tripartite committee, five members from employers. Five members from organized labor, and only the minister went and sat. The, the matters were brought to the table. They discussed it. They saw the need that indeed we are not in normal times. And therefore, the revenues that we were expecting we could not get. Productivity has reduced. It affected everything. Mm -hmm. And therefore, for us, even though productivity has reduced, we are not going to say that we are not going to increase your salary. Indeed, minimum wage. Either two, minimum wage was hovering around nine point uh, 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 something. Uh, then we move it to 11. Now, as we are speaking, it's 11.53. As a result of prudent management of the economy and the fact that we are not just hiding behind COVID, but the realities are there for everybody to see that indeed COVID affected everybody. And then the Chapata Committee. A luxurious the, private listen, jet the Chapata Committee came to the conclusion that indeed 4% is good enough. For the it, public sector yeah, workers. But the president flew no, a luxurious it, private jet for 15,000 an hour. How do you define luxurious? Well, we went on the website. We all saw exactly so, so, what it is. So that company described it itself as that's, that's their most luxurious that's private so, jet. So, so if, if you have a company and you want people to come and, you know. But we uh, saw uh, we saw the interior going, of the private jet. My point that, yeah. here, and let's not so, even so, drag I mean, the issue about the private jet. But we're saying we don't have money. 
but we can fly a luxurious private jet for fifteen thousand. I am saying it's not a luxurious private and jet. And yes, when it comes it to increasing luxurious. the salaries, the base pay no, see, of public sector it, workers, it, it, we it, say it, that it's four percent. We that can that give point, them. When you make that point, that uh, 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 populist point that somebody rode and uh, or flew luxurious uh, 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 airplane okay. and therefore should come and give public sector workers hundred percent increase. Nobody's asking for a 100% increase. <laughs> and you heard what the president said. So, he says yeah. that they want a 25% increase in base pay. At on, least. On, on what basis? Because they're saying basis? that they have to pay taxes. Yes, yes. Life no, no, is but, difficult. But do you, you know, do you know that even, even under COVID, we reduce some of the taxes? Which ones? Oh, taxes on, taxes on uh, uh, taxes. We, 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 we even rebate on some of, uh, even delayed. But you came back and gave us six more taxes to pay. No, but, but we have reduced some. Even this, this government has shown that when it comes to tax okay. taxation, we reduced about 18 different taxations since, since we came to power. But we're still paying some taxes, including the free but, electricity but you, and free water. You want to no, the taxes, free? you brought them, those luxury taxes, and yeah. then you took no, them away. No, no, I mean, you are only talking about one. CST is one of them. You are only to CST had been there long ago. Did you not increase it? And we reduce it. We reduce it even. We reduce it even more than the original. Uh, 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 we reduce okay. it from. We reduce it. After we reduce you collected more money, is when you, you reduce it. We reduce it to five percent, even though it was six okay. percent under the NDC. I just, see. Just All right. Point. So 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 yeah. in ending, I, I will just I will just say that I mean they should bear with government. So they don't they, deserve. They, do they deserve the twenty? They deserve increase, and that is the reason why they've been increased. They, their salaries have been increased. They say so let's not enough. create impression as if. <laughs> they have not increased their salaries. Four percent. Do you know they, how much four percent is? But what For has some been the of them, it's just twenty Ghana if, cities. If productivity were the measure of salary increase, if productivity were to commensurate with salary increase, I don't think that they would have had okay. any increase. Okay, Elikem, please. They even have had even I, reduction I, I, in their salaries. I, you are I, saying I, they are not being productive. I'm saying that because of COVID, everybody has not been as productive as we should have. Which is why I'm saying that then we shouldn't have given a 79% increase and say that they should. And I told you that there has the never been 79% increase, technically. Okay, you Ellie can please I come am, in. Learn from me on this so I we am, can move on. I, I am very scandalized time. and at sea over the submissions by my brother in relation to this matter. I mean, you see what I was telling you earlier that the lifestyle of government alone is even enough reason for the agitations we are seeing today. The president had, will tell you, and now we don't have money. But you can fly a luxurious flight. Oh and they are not saying what is luxury when the company itself defines it as luxury. Mm. Imagine had the Norwegian journalist not actually exposed the scandalous misconduct of our regime by the finance minister and the health minister. Over 2.47, almost 16 million cities would never have been accounted for. If it may be accounted for, it will be accounted into individual pockets. And they have no shame because we still have these people even at post. Mm. So when these people are witnessing all these, they have every justification to tell it. Because that 16 points whatever million alone could have sufficed for probably 10% of them, and you would have found another money for another. You recall a CSO did a survey in 2017, 2018, that said over 19 billion was actually sinking into mm. corruption. And you recall the numerous scandals we have had amongst other things. It was nine. Are, it was nine. Nine billion. Yeah. So you see, so there are a lot of ways. So when you have the president who at one point will tell you there is money, yeah, and at right. another point tell you that there's no money, then the finance minister comes to say we are on, on strong footing. We are on strong footing. Why then are you suffering? So you kind of, you be some hypocrisy of cherry picking us and when it favors us. When it is not so good, oh, we are in tough times. We are in the, we are not out of the woods yet. Please understand us. Then the next time they are telling you at the budget, just reading or at another point that, oh, our economy is still robust. Ghana has been touted as one of the best in terms of, then why the struggling? So be real and tell the people the facts. You are lying to the people. Mm. So they keep getting conflicting and confusing statements, even from government spokesperson. We've heard the finance minister say something different. You will hear the president himself say another, and then you have the spokespersons also saying another thing. So we, you do not even know what to say. Meanwhile, the people are witnessing what is happening. Whether you like it or not, the numerous corruption cases that continue to 
arise in this government that has become like an agenda 419 is really worrying. And it is more reason why you would have them complain bitterly and request for 35%. I know you would agree with me that maybe they could have even said we are expecting 15% or 20%, mm -hmm. but they feel the need to call for a high price or high rate because they are witnessing. And it is not just me saying it. You also know, but because you are an empire for the program, you are unable to say it. There's an endemic corruption that has been established under this regime. The president, which is, says, which is the very president says he is committed to fighting he corruption. He told you and I that he was going to fight it in the, uh, Anas, using the Anas principle. What happened? He told us uh, what happened to uh, the, uh, Daniel Yaldama level. Then they will come to tell you that oh, allocations has been given to anti graft mm. institutions. And they, you think that alone is enough? Your actions must show, not mm. just words. So this is a PR government that is good at talking, but very zero. Are you helping government to fight corruption? We've seen the Auditor General's report on the energy sector and all the other sectors and, you, you know, the level of corruption I mean, in there. You, you, I think Are you going to take it up as a minority would, parliament? They, I'm, I am sure they will, and I'm also sure that Ghanaians will applaud the minority for taking them on each time. Okay. Because you recall the Japa, the PDS, etc. Had it not been the ma minority with the backing of Ghanaians, it, what, what we witnessed today wouldn't have been the case. But in Japa, it was the special prosecutor who really hammered on that issue. It, 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 it took the minority. That's why I started you that it, it took the minority to to also speak strongly on that as well okay. as Ghanaians to do the back right. yeah, uh, Let, Let's move on, unfortunately. Oh, no, no, we, 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 have to, we have and to I, move I, on. You know, see, he has said certain things that... You, I'll, give you, I'll give you just a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. So First you of can, all, I mean... One minute, please, so we can move on. say that oh, the minority, it was because of the minority that uh, a PDS and all the PDS, do you know how it, the whole thing came about? The Ghanaians know it already. I mean, it was even the president himself who decided even, you know, uh, 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 against even the direction of the, the United States government. Mm. When the United States government says that we should, we should have mm. a way of rectifying the PDS saga, the president says no, because they have flouted the laws of this it's nation. And the people who and flouted the laws. Yeah, and, and that was even the reason why. Exactly. I'm, I'm coming. I mean, uh, the matter is still in court. You see? In general, <laughs> in, what is happening to the people? You that talk about that it. corruption, that uh, this government is endemic when it comes to corruption. I mean, look at NDC person talking about corruption. And that's a uh, corruption has been established. Established by who? But you who? promised to do better, which is no, no, we we're, we're doing better. <laughs> you see, you see, but then it looks as if you are, you are so deep no, no, in corruption. Between, between How are we? You see, if you look at the Auditor General report that came, it was not mainly about corruption, it's about irregularities. And this is not the first time. If you look at the Auditor General reports over the years, mm. This, even even if it, if you look at the twelve billion that they said well, you know is lost and all that, nine said, billion. Uh, they said they said about no, it said twelve billion. I, it and nine billion, billion is as a the, result. The auditor general says twelve billion. Yeah, the CDD it's, says nine billion has yes, been lost corruption. I mean, the auditor general. You see, but the MP, said, MPP says no, it's wrong. The, yeah, yeah, it's wrong so because they the said that, that even if ten corruption. billion was as a result of you know a, 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 on inability. Uh -huh of the institution to recoup certain loans Bella, and all that. PDS, uh -huh. so, 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 please, while you were talking, please, I kept quiet. Were talking, I kept quiet. So I'm saying that if you want to say, oh, because of corruption, people can agitate and, you know, ask for what is not deserving of them. Oh, you think it's then, not deserving No, I mean, I mean the, uh, the, the quantum that they are, they are asking uh -huh. for. Really? They are asking for an increase of 25% in their salaries. They don't deserve that? At this point, particular point in time. They I don't? Mean, they have, that is not realistic. Let's be honest with ourselves. It is not realistic. It is not realistic. At this, point, at this point, to be asking of 25% salary increase, government when we all know, when, we, when the facts are palpable, the facts are Is this are your there. personal opinion or are you speaking on behalf of government? Because I mean, they're why? asking. Is it realistic to you? Is it realistic? <laughs> I'm asking you. I'm also asking you. I'm asking you. Is it realistic? No, no, no. Is it realistic? To answer questions, is it not to realistic ask me for questions. you to be coercing people to agitate okay. for twenty five percent? That's what I'm asking. Is it your personal opinion? No, but I'm or saying is this no, a reflection I'll also of, ask you of your personal opinion. You can't ask me my personal opinion. Is it I will no, not no, no, answer, answer, answer me. But is it realistic? It is, it is realistic. It is not realistic. It is realistic for every employer. Okay. To okay. Seek it is further. not realistic right. for anybody to say. Let, let's move on. Let's move on and talk about Agenda One One One. And yesterday, minority put out a statement asking for government to account for some six hundred and thirty-six million Ghana cities that has already been spent uh, ahead of the Agenda One One One. Again, we're told that some thirty-six million of that amount went into the project, um, you know, design and. 
number of other things, some consultative meetings. But there's some 600 million Ghana cities um, that has not been accounted for, even though it appeared in the budget. And yesterday, this issue was raised. We saw the health minister respond. We saw the presidential advisor, Dr. Nsia Asari, also respond. Let's take a look at what they both had to say on this matter, and we'll discuss it. that since I joined the ministry, no project has been abandoned. Last year, we did a lot of shortcutting on some projects. And we are being asked questions as to why these projects have not started or have not completed. Let me state that it looks like very soon, very quickly, all of us Ghanaians are forgetting about the fact that the world was hit by a pandemic which disrupted normal economic activities. Projects like La, Shama, 12 different hospitals to be done by just one contractor, Vamed from Europe. We did so cutting for all of these in October, November. By December, COVID second wave has hit Europe and this attended disruptions. People were not going to work, like in our country. Flight disruptions and cancellations and restrictions and quarantine and certain demands at certain airports wouldn't allow easily contractors and engineers who are coming to engage us to begin work for these projects to be done. And these are things that have actually delayed some of the projects we did sort cutting for. All that we have to do on these projects have not been completed. And within the next two weeks, uh, Vamed alone will have, is mobilizing to 12 different sites, Shama and um, La. Next week, you will see work, even now, preliminary works ongoing in these places. And maybe when you look at the budget, we will see if 600 million has actually been spent. I don't believe that. I, I know that for the past one year, this committee plus the project steering committee and all the subcommittees have been sitting in the office, in the rooms and closed doors, and we've been working assiduously towards this. That's the reason why yesterday it ended up that the president have to commence the projects. And somebody was saying that why are we making what pageant, pan and pageant about it? There's a there's a proverb in Chi, a sansa for idea or the chile. All right, so that's Dr. Nsia Sari. He's the presidential advisor on health. And earlier we saw the health minister, Dr. Kukwajima Menu, also respond to some abandoned projects as well. Again, in the 2021 mid-year budget review in Appendix 4, D and E, it indicated that some amount of money had been spent. And it said 36 million of that money had been spent on project designs, consultants and coordinators. And also the sum of 600 million released and utilized in 2020. But there were no details on that particular one. The health minister says we've not abandoned. And Dr. Nsiasari says, I don't believe we spent that money. Elikam, I'll come to you first. Uh, why was there a need to raise these concerns about Agenda 111, especially at a point when we've cut sword and we've been assured that we're going to see these 88 or 111 uh, hospitals, district, regional, and the psychiatric hospitals in 18 months? On a normal day, everybody, including yourself and myself, will say that is a brilliant project. It, it is welcome news. Mm. But of what character is the precedent in terms of cutting sort for projects? Shama, mm. he cut sort for a project that till date, not after the day they cut sort and equipment was sent on site, nothing has happened to date. He said COVID is the reason why they could not. And, and so has COVID stopped now? So you see what I said was the hypocrisy of cherry picking what to say and do at what time? So has COVID stopped? It is the same reason they told us that. Uh, there was emergency to save lives. That was why they went to procure the Sputnik V vaccines at that cost. When were we at the peak of COVID? Was it March? No. And so if the health minister was not thinking straight at that time, he became a square peg in the round hole right from the word go. This was the same health minister who didn't know anything about who contracted frontier services to be conducting COVID-19 tests at the airport. So you see, 
And I am so scandalized when I see these things. And you see, a project that is all going to cost almost $2 billion. You have given 200 million seed capital, and you believe that this is adequate enough for this to take flight, amongst other things. Why are we not, why shouldn't we be convinced that this is just one of those PR rhetorics? Because the president, not long ago, sometime, was it early this year or last year, mm. promised us the 88 hospitals and all that. That was last year in his well, eighth address to the how many? How many has he achieved? And how, how long? But did they, they told us that they had to go through phase one of the project. How long did he promise us at that time that it was going to be completed across mm. the country? And what work did we seize from that time till date? That is what they updated us on. So from the minister, <laughs> a the year ago, minister, right, the media so it has taken here. a year. He said consultations and a number of other so things. So it has design. taken, you see, you see, when the, pop, the president becomes populist, these are the things you see. Mm. So he was telling us that a year ago during the pandemic to make us feel that there's some urgency and the need to build uh, 88 hospitals immediately to resolve the COVID-19 pandemic. A year on, we are now being told again that we are going to build 111. And where is the funding coming from? There's no clarity on it. And have you seen what they have done? It does not fall under... It falls under the presidency itself. The mm. chief of staff, I'm told, is beyond. How is the presidency awarding contracts and all because these things? Because they want him to have direct oversight is, over is the that issue, how it is which done? is what Dr. Nsia Is that how said. it is done? He so said the it's president a flagship project. The president has, is now telling you and I that when his ministers are in charge of programs, he always fails to have an oversight responsibility. That is why we are witnessing the mess we are in. And it is very disappointing, to say the least, that till date, the finance minister and the health minister are still at post and are even moving with the president on their trips. It is the reason why now at the mention of President Nanado, he becomes a noun and his pronoun is corruption. It is very worrying. Everybody would welcome news of development amongst other things. President Mahama, you saw the, the, the projects under his channel, UGMC, the Maritime Hospital, the, uh, the Ridge that saw an upliftment, the Bank Hospital, many others. He didn't need all that pop and pageantry. What did they not do about the, the cathedral? Where are we today? Bella, they are asking you to pay 100 CDs a month. Voluntarily. Oh, voluntarily, yes. That is what I'm telling you. They are asking you to pay. They're not forcing it. So anyone. if you cannot pay it, the buildings that have been pulled down, and for that project, it will, be, it will stop. And somebody has to be held responsible. I speak with this with so much passion, because that is the negligence and recklessness of a government that we voted for. You have the cathedral. You made a, a single prayer, a singular prayer to your God. You prayed and said, when you make me win an election, I'll build for you a cathedral. Go to Cote d'Ivoire. Fobwani did the same with the basilica. He didn't come to the people for that. You, you did that. Prayed to God and said, God gave you victory. You knew it was for four years. What did you do in the four years? You put people on planes going to raise funds when we mentioned that you said no, not even a single public fund will be made available for that. In the end, some funding was, uh, was, was, was given to support that. Mm. Still, it wasn't enough. Today, you are asking us, were we there when you were praying to God? Do you know the, the church the president attended? Mm. By chance, do you know? So by mere fact that he even said the battle is the Lord, dazzled everybody and made us believe that, oh, he must be a strong Christian and a believer. But he is Christian. I, don't, I, 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 I cannot question that. But which church does he even attend? I think I don't which know. church? Either Richard or Christ the King. Well, he I don't know. One of those you, you see, so this is, and this is a president who has not been able to fulfill numerous promises, including one that he made a promise to God. And you want me to believe that same president? When I have given you other examples of projects that he cut short for, go to Apawai where I schooled. He cut short for a project there. Go to the, the, the Ajib roundabout in St. Takrati. He cut short for a project there for the interchange. What has happened? Numerous projects that he has cut short for. What exactly has he done? So the rhetoric of making governance a PR work where you talk, that is what Nigerians always say, talk no do. A lot of talking. You didn't need to be doing too much talking. Let your work do the talking for you. Is that probably not why he has oversight over this one? Because he wants to ensure that we've made promises. I mean, people have been describing him as the person who makes promises one and district, doesn't fulfill one them. District, Is that not why he wants to have district, direct oversight factory, so that in 18 one months district, we see a hospital? One district, one factory also was taken away from Alan Chermantin's uh, portfolio. So a secretariat was created separately for that. What have we seen of that? It is just existing companies that have been rebranded or even some little support extended to them. Then they need to have a banner called it is one district, one factory. Not only existing. I mean, the trade minister eventually came out to give us details have, of, of some details new, of how many some of, new uh, factories that have uh, been put what, out as what well. Percentage Not of too that long ago, they to, mentioned about 50 or 53 new factories. As against they have the other continually ones. mentioned they figures that you, the journalists, will need to verify. And I'm telling you on national studio that those are palpable falsehoods. Okay. You try to follow them. You recall how they even put up 
uh, their projects on a website, including toilets, amongst other things. And mm. in the end, they were pulling them down. They could not do a book because if they did that and it was containing the book, there was no way they would have been tearing it apart. So they had to put it online. So when you complain and they realize they're exposed, then they quickly put it, pu pull it down. Okay. It, is, it is not refreshing. It is not... It, we, we all wish that we can do that. And for the president to even say that this will make Ghana a medical destination or medical hub for... Mm. Look, if you look at how much they're using to build these hospitals, are they building pol polyclinics? That will be... It's a district hospitals, the, one regional hospital in the And Western when you region. do an, a calculation, uh, averagely one is going to cost us about $16.8 million. And these are the same people who had gone to uh, cut sort for a project for Shaman, Shaman. for 32 million euros. Mm. So what, 32 million euros and 16.8 uh, 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 million dollars, which is which? So let us get real. My unfortunate scenario, the unfortunate thing, however, is that we are having some media who are also not scrutinizing enough. And that is why we take everything line who can sink her. Because if that is the case, I need to make an analysis. Look, this is hot it was under President Mahama. When it was even 25 million, a, a hospital was 25 million. Uh, Dr. Baumia said that 25 million could build five hospitals. Mm. Till date, I am yet to see him build five hospitals with 25 million dollars. So you see, mere rhetorics and talking is cheap. It is very easy. Okay. All right. Let, let me just let Cookie read some messages quickly before Saka comes in to respond. First one this. says, the man Saka did not know what he's talking about. Next time, do not bring him to the show. Bismarck in Agbozume says that one. Good morning, Bella. Is Saka Salia saying Ghanaians are not paying for the so-called free water and electricity? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Good morning, Bella. The MPP led by President Anna Ikufuado has failed lamentably to inspire confidence in Ghanaians, particularly the gallant youth of this country. Why on earth do you increase your salaries by 70% and only 4%? for workers trudels sent in that one next one says hi bella good morning to you and your panelists please i don't actually understand what this mpp man is saying let's not turn a blind a blind eye to what's not going on well in this country when it happens to you you would say it's bad but when it happens to someone else it is good bella i can tell you for a fact and when you need evidence, please hit me up and I'll provide you with the evidence that 4% increment salary for me, a young teacher married with a child, has less than 60% for salary increment. And the fuel I buy in my motorcycle from home to school and back costs me more than 200 cities aside maintenance and change of oil for a motorcycle. Hmm. We are waiting for 2024. And that came from K in Nkwanta South. What's this thing about COVID? whenever our governments find its back against the world. I thought COVID funds of $1 billion were provided by the World Bank. We also claimed we exceeded our revenue projections. So why this COVID, COVID, COVID? Good morning, Bella. The leaders who negotiated for the 4% increments are disappointment to the hard workers of this country and should step down. Gundana from um, Wendam in Bolgatanga sent in that one. Oh my God, this MPP communicator has made me sad this morning. For him to say public sector workers are not productive, I am very saddened. I am clear in my mind towards 2024. Now, Walanyo in Akutia says, if public sector workers are not satisfied with the salary adjustments, they can go and search for greener pastures somewhere else where they can receive huge salary increments so that those of us who are unemployed can take over their places to end just half of their salaries. What are they talking about? Regards to Chairman Kistina Komiya, Kisi, MPP Eastern Regional Chairman. Good morning. Please tell Saka to stop deceiving the good people of the Republic of, of Ghana. Public sector workers are angry about the 4% increments in their salaries. How much is the cost of a bag of maize? Now kindly ask Mr. Saka his profession and let him come to the classroom and teach before speaking 4% increment before saying that 4% increment is good for public sector mm. workers. Thank you so much, Cookie. And Anayal says it's best if Saka kept mute. And Alaji Hamza from Pig Farm says, should be told this government has not been fair to public sector workers. 4% increase in their salaries is a slap and an insult to them. It is time government takes the good people of this country serious and stop insulting our intelligence. Elikem Kotoko has spoken the minds of Ghanaians this morning, and I'm proud of him. Saka, coming to you. So... The, the presidential advice on health says he doesn't believe that 600 million has been spent. Has it really been spent? And if it was spent, what was it spent on? Yeah, thank you very much. Before I come there, I mean, Elkin got to commit a lot of unverifiable allegations here to the extent that he is telling us that 
uh, this government is corrupt, and that the president does not know what he's talking, what, what he's doing. Please speak up for me. And that, and that the president does not know what he's doing. First of all, I think that the NDC is this. They are this of the fact that we are going to have Agenda 111. 111 hospitals to be built within a space of four years by a single months. government. I'm coming. By a single government. You see, when we say 18 months, we talk about 18 months from the date of commencement. Wait, so we're talking about Agenda 111? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're saying four years. <laughs> oh, please. I told you. No, no, no. Explain, no, you listen explain. to me. Okay. Listen. We are talking about 18 months. For, or from the day of commencement. Okay. So, for instance, we went to uh, a commission 88. Uh -huh. That is written now. Uh -huh. The date that is that they will start commencement of the project Which within was on the 18 17th. months. Within 18 months, because look, if we go to Trader and then Trader started, you know, uh, the commencement started last Monday. Uh -huh. You don't expect another hospital that will maybe start three weeks or three months time. To, to, to have completed the, the president same. says the, we will get them all in all 18, 18 months. months. You didn't so that is what those are you that, that start. Elegan, please. You see, that, those that speak. start on the day that he's talking about. But he says we should <laughs> So, okay, but when we say. When and we, in fact, they even said that we are not doing this in faces because we don't believe in faces. <laughs> no, we are doing the, everything the 88, at a go. The 88, we are talking about agenda 111, but we started with 88. Mm -hmm. So, the day the, agenda, the 88 starts. It's not a date, it, it, it's not going to end on the same day that the others will also, mm. you know. Okay. So we are talking about 18 days, 18 months mm -hmm. from the date of commencement of the project. Okay. I but, mean, this is so clear for, I mean, so, to, so for hold anybody on. If, to understand. If in another district it starts maybe a month from now, then we have to start calculating from that moment. Is exactly. that what you're saying? Then why is it that at the event the MC announced that all MMDCs should wait behind? Um, you know, and see the contractors because the work has to start. Yeah, because they were starting, that, that it, it is starting on, at that time. But we are talking about... But that's not what the oh, president said, Saka. He says, see, we will see these completed in 18 months. Those that he uh, uh, com 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 commissioned the commencement date, that was what he was talking about, not those that are yet to even start. You know, the NDC talk as if, I mean, when building hospitals, it's like... A kung fa yakum, like B and it is, mm. or you go to the mall and buy cake and then come and then cut. Mm -hmm. It has faces. It takes time. Like we said, consultation with the cons consultants, they would do the designing. But they've you done have, all that. That's I'm awesome. coming because he was talking about the fact that it, the agenda eighty eight, which was promised a year ago, a year ago, uh -huh. he did not even see what has happened and all that. And I'm saying that. It takes time. Even the acquisition of the land itself takes time. Mm -hmm. You go and take the land, you ensure that it is, uh, 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 you get rid of every encumbrances on the, on the land. You ensure that even the land is registered. It takes time. And they've done that. So, yes. So, so that is the period, <laughs> that is the, the process from that period up to now. Mm -hmm. And now the real, you know, break and mortar mm -hmm. work is starting. And it will take 18 months to do so. Mm. So I, I am not surprised that the NDC is flip-flopping here. I mean, in, in one breath, you will hear their, 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 their flag bearer, John Ramani Mahama, the then mm. former president, say that, oh, mm. I mean, it is not necessary to build 88 hospitals it in all. He what? said so. <laughs> he, he said, said so what? the Euro Radio uh -huh. in Bolgatanga. He said that it is, it, is, it is not possible, and it doesn't even make sense to say that you are building... 80, uh, 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 111 11. hospitals, and for every hospital, every district to have an, a, a hospital. He said so. He said it doesn't make sense. He said it was an <laughs> afterthought. After I am telling you what he said. <laughs> I'm telling you what he said. Okay. Alex Fekwefi Alex says that, oh, it is something that MPP copied from them. If your flag bearer, your, your former head, uh, uh, president, is saying that it doesn't make sense, and you are saying, that we are copying it from the NDC. So, so it means that, either. oh, please. Okay, you I'll let you respond. You, the point here is... He should respond again it, when I'm... I'll <laughs> let him respond later. You, you have the floor. But what I want to ask you is, it took us a whole year to go through the processes of land acquisition, 
design and all of that. We have been told that this process is supposed to have been automated when it comes to land acquisition. So you just go to the land um, you know, department and it's automated, really. So you don't have to go through all the stress. Yeah, but, but, you see, but it took us a even, whole even, year, even, even as government. Even the preferred sites and all that, it has to take time. Where and, 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 and where to site the project and all that, it has to take time. The registration. I'm telling you that even the design alone, there's a lot of time that... So if all that it. took a year, what's the guarantee that this can actually it, it, be ready in, in no, but, 16? But we just, now you're look, telling us depends on when they actually start the work on the no, ground, but I, which is totally different from I, what the I am saying has that, said. I'm saying that now we have done the most difficult aspects of it, Okay. where to look for it and all that. Now we are only zooming in on the work itself. Okay. So if you come to say, that, oh, where are you get, getting the money from? I see if we cannot even get two billion. Let me tell you, <coughs> even excess capacity alone that we pay because of the reckless nature that the NDC signed a, a, a take or pay arrange a, a, a PPPs. Mm. That one alone, five hundred million, almost a billion a year, and we are talking about a hospitals that will save this country from you know. Uh, ensure that we, we become the hub. 600 million has been spent already. No, no, no. I mean, if you listen, listen to uh, uh, the, the... The presidential advisor? The president, he he says, says he doesn't believe yes, that it's been spent. So, I'm asking so you. I, mean, I don't know because I'm not, I'm not part of those who the spending authority. And those who are part of the spending authority are telling you that it's not true. But you know, it, it appeared in the media budget review. Really. So what I am seeing is that clearly you could see that the NDC, that towns themselves as a political party that built infrastructure. If you look, I've always asked them a question, that they should tell me a project that John Draman and Mahama started in this regime, a health infrastructure project that he started and ended. Yeah. Up to now, nobody can tell me. You know, he's talking about University of Ghana uh, 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 Hospital, how many which was not started by, oh, please, 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 please. <laughs> University of Ghana Hospital. He mentioned it here uh -huh. as, as a project that John Draman and Muhammad left, left us. He was not the one who started it in the first place. It started with Professor Mills. The Greater Accra Regional Hospital? The Greater Accra Regional Hospital is an existing hospital that he renovated. Okay. You, you understand? And he, he talked about even the Ghana East Hospital, which was part of the Eurodigit project. Okay. All the hospitals that he mentioned, they are not the brainchild of John, uh, uh, John Draman and Muhammad. Meanwhile, they will come here and sit and, and lie. Why are Do contracts being awarded from the office of the presidency and not from the secretary? Well, I mean, ministries? you see, every 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 ministry is supposed to the president is supposed to have oversight responsibility over every ministry. Mm -hmm. When the president has uh, one to have a, a focus on a certain project, he brings it to his own to the to his doorsteps in order to give it the focus that it deserves. So that's the reason Has why. he lost trust in his people? It's so not about trust. In this case because it's, it's not about trust. Awarded. It's to ensure the speedy, expeditious... Uh, 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 we, we don't have details of the procurement process. So now if we go to parliament, no, no, but if you want, someone if, has to be answerable no, to it. If, the chairperson if you of this project details, is the chief of staff. If you want we details. cannot call her to parliament to answer these but, questions, I mean, can but, we? But the, 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 the president is there. We should uh, call the, the president. Chief, no, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that you should call the president. Okay. But what I'm saying is that the president has oversight responsibility over all the things that we are talking about. How do we keep about. them so accountable? And not only that, I mean, it's, how do you keep it de them in account? Yeah. How do we keep them accountable if we do not have access because it's the chief of staff and the president? No, how but has anybody, anybody requested... Because that's the stance. We don't has even anybody, have the Has anybody requested to details. know how the procurement process went? But this is what we are asking now. But am I the person for you to ask what, Are you not for the, speaking? Okay. No. <laughs> for the no. Are the you not speaking on behalf of government? No, I'm speaking on behalf of government. But you see, we are talking about the, the minute details of this project. We are talking about the minute details of this project until it is out there or given to communicate it. You don't expect me to go okay. about okay. telling you how the procurement was done. So then we shouldn't be asking but you because you can't give us the answers that, that we need. The most important thing is that no procurement process was skewed. It went through how the normal, we, the normal process of procurement. How will we know if we don't have the evidence? That's what we're asking. 
you say you don't know, it's fine. Uh, well, <laughs> I, have, you know, I have to go. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I told you to ready yourself. 30 seconds, for, please. I told you to ready yourself for a lot of mischief, and I think it has gone over the roof. I think, mm -hmm. I don't know what cup of hypocrisy my brother is serving Are himself. You me, because, you, you see, no, I'm not insulting you. I mean, your own self If, if, if he feels insulted, please, if let's take it back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but I don't know what, allow that. I don't know what, what cup of drink you're taking in terms of your submissions, because I feel so scandalized, and so are the people watching, because at one point, we cannot question you. At another point, we should go and question somebody. Then what is the capacity in which you are even here? The question has been that, look, the president is not taking charge of projects with the chief of staff. Who do we then question if we have to? We don't know the procurement processes. Is that what the laid down rules are supposed to be? But the Then you are now here see, talking about excess this capacity. Is, this is what is Ghana's no, electricity no, no, penetration? The, the okay. Thing. What is Ghana's is, electricity is, penetration? No, but this is within, the, this is within the health ministry. I'm so sorry. Let, let, me, let me wish you a happy birthday to Ani Amkofo. You have to ask the health minister. Yeah, but you came here. Uh, we asked him yesterday. He says they didn't abandon projects. Airports. No, no, but I'm not talking about the abandon. We don't know where the money is coming from. No, 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 no I'm talking about the procurement process that you talk about. Procurement. And okay. If Parliament wants to. The minister was if, asked if, about if, procurement yes, processes yes. involved in Frontiers Healthcare. Yes. No, no, I'm talking. No, no, we are not talking about Frontiers. So how can we ask him? We are talking about. No, we are talking about Agenda 111. And I'm saying that if if Parliament wants questions on Agenda 111, because it it has to do with the health ministry. The best place or the best person to act is the health minister. Who doesn't have control over the project? Who's, Who's the, the chairperson of this contract? The chairperson. What yes. do you know the chairperson? Of the steering committee for on Agenda, agenda 111. One. It's the chief of staff. No, but you see, the chief of staff cannot go she to doesn't parliament. Have uh -huh. But so you have to use a minister. And oh. the minister. So what if he comes back minister, again and tells no, us no, he doesn't know, know, know like frontiers? It. Then what do we do? No, no, he was only giving them information. About okay. about the procurement of the, the, the frontiers. Okay. But I'm not sure that if you go to Parliament, he will tell Parliament that. But he it was in Parliament, <laughs> in front of the appointments committee. He said he didn't know, and he's not the only one. No, but it's the not every, every procurement in within your Attorney ministry General that you can. You can. He didn't it's know not every not procurement within your ministry. The board. It's not every procurement within your ministry that you can offhand just say that it, I know. Okay. Uh, okay. Unless you go, unless you go to the books and then search.